happened. It seems like with Dustin, the the major consensus is after his contract was terminated mutually by uh, Winnipeg and by himself, he walks away from $15 million. Uh If you're walking away from $15 million, you probably have some money, but that feels like done to me. Doesn't that feel like done to you? Well, I found it very interesting that it did not come on the same day that the Scandella contract was announced. Thursday. And yeah, and everyone's like, oh, well, that means, you know, they're letting Petro walk. And it's almost like all these Tetris pieces are slowly being worked into little slots there. I don't think Bufflin's done. You don't think he's done? No, I'm he's done the with the Jets. Done. I'm on the I wouldn't side. be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Like he doesn't he's play done. hockey ever again. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think he even puts on skates. One, the one... The one thing that gives me pause is he's notoriously a bad off-season player. And what if you're off for like a year and a half with an injury slash pandemic and you're three bills? Yeah. I think if Dustin Bufflin still wanted to play hockey, we would have seen him suit up in September. I think there came a point where it was just he doesn't want to play hockey anymore. This is all just guessing, but that's how it looks to me. Yeah. Also, does he... Now, and uh, I, I seem to remember something like this with Nathan Horton, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe he requires some sort of surgery that makes it so that, like, you're done. You, you know what I mean? And that would basically nullify his contract. I, I can't remember. Wasn't, isn't well, wouldn't he, have with... gotten, wouldn't he have gotten the surgery and then just re- uh, put on yeah, LTIR okay. and then gotten the money? It sounds like he doesn't have any injury that could get him his money. Plus, he didn't want to play. I mean, feelings are a thing. Like, this actually reminds me a little bit of uh, Owen Nolan with uh, the Leafs because there was a dispute uh, going into the lockout where the Leafs owed him like six million bucks or something, he argued. And their argument was heading into the full season of the lockout was, well, no, you're injured. Or something like that. There was something... Something in there, and basically that damaged the relationship. It was irreparable. But he, he did end up going on to play for at least one other team. Mm-hmm. I think he went on to play for several. Uh, like, you remember when he was a Coyote for a hot minute mm-hmm. and a Minnesota Wild for a hot minute? So it could be one of those things where, you know, because it was ugly. It was like, the, I want to say there was like misdiagnosis or like there was some sort of misinformation. So maybe he wants to play hockey, just nowhere near the Winnipeg Jets anymore. But to walk away from $15 million? Yeah. So the thing is... Yeah, but all the reports on Buff is he's a weird guy and would do something like that. Okay, and, and that's <laughs> fair. But even from... Like, he would have to push for that because no agent's ever going to push for that. No legal advisor's oh. ever going to push for that. Mm-hmm. No. So my, my question then becomes, okay, if that was the case, um, then his ankle injury would have had to be so bad and his anger about the jets would have had to be so bad that he like, cause what he did, or at least the way it looks, and I'm not saying this is what he did or it was an intentional thing, but because of this contract thing, Winnipeg was not able to get out. And I I think that, you know, they, they went through last summer assuming they would have him. And then, so, you know, I feel like you could have traded us Dustin Bufflin if he would have agreed to come out. Like if he would have agreed to play even if it was for nothing. Uh, because the most valuable thing in the NHL to have is cap space. And that's what hampered them. I mean, they had a great season anyway. But it hampered them from being able to pull any other asset in. They couldn't trade Bufflin. They couldn't do anything with it. So it's sort of, it's, it, it would be odd to me to go through all of that just to have him come back with another team when that could have been accomplished many different ways, probably easier and probably more lucratively for him. Like, there's just, to me, there's something that doesn't, there's a piece missing here. I can't even put my finger on it, where I look at the Dustin Bufflin situation and think, I don't know, if it seems an awful lot like he wanted to be finished with this. Um, and and because if he didn't, there was many other ways to get to play for another team that he could have had. And he would have never had to suit up for the Jets again. Like they Why could not have- announce your retirement right away? Like w- with this announcement, okay, uh, yeah, we're mutually terminating my contract. Why not just right away and also I retire? Yeah. 
I yeah, guess. just say I'm too injured. I, 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 that's that's why I think he's done with the Jets, but he's not done. Mm-hmm. Or maybe he wants to see if he can use this time off. You know, who knows when then? Because he can't play this season. So we're talking next season, whenever that is. Like that could be he January. Play this season. He well, he could, but with the Jets. But he terminated his contract. So as far as I know, he can't play the. 2019 2020 season unless okay. he's unless he were to sign a contract with the team play for them but he wouldn't be eligible for the playoffs right, why wouldn't right. he be no because you got to be on the roster by trade deadline to make the playoff to play yeah. oh yeah, right yeah. i forgot about that yeah but the then there's still the question of what's what was the holdups in september in that it was he injured or just did, why didn't he want to play i think it's feelings I think it's feeling because wasn't there the misdiagnosis like they didn't catch a broken bone in his ankle? Yes, yeah, something like that. I think it's feelings, um, and but I also think the Jets wanted him. Like I, I think the Jets thought they could fix this, mm-hmm. and they couldn't. And so he comes to them is like, I don't want to be in your organization anymore, and they're like, we we don't have to trade you, we don't have to terminate your contract right now or anything like that. We're gonna try and work this out. And then it spends, and then they take all this time, and nothing gets resolved, and then we reach this point. Is that Could, be. Could be. Could yeah. be. I mean, uh, you know, teams don't like letting players who are never going to play for them again uh, dictate the terms. You know, very different situation, but like the Oilers with Puli you know, they were doing okay, and they're like, all right, well, we'll just hold on to you, and you can sit, mm-hmm. enjoy Finland, you know, enjoy whatever at uh, Carpat. I can't remember the team he plays for, you know, mm-hmm. fourth overall pick. You don't want to play in the NHL. Huh? Oh, you do want to play in the NHL. Well, you know, we control that, right? So you can play for us. You want to play for, well, then you can't play in the NHL. You know what I mean? So it, it could have been something like that. This you are, you guys are onto something though. Like I just feel like there's very key points that we're missing here and you can't underestimate the factor of that's a different dude. Like all sure. reports are, but that's you can overestimate that. And, sure and, and what I'm saying is, even with Elliot Friedman, when he's reported on this, has not been clear. Yeah. And, you know, he's been like, well, there's this and there's that. And you could tell there's something that he knows that he can't report. But there's know. something he knows. For he sure. Could, he could just be one of those guys, man. Like Jerome Aginla, everyone knew. Um, but this, once, the season, yeah. once the season's over, you're not going to be able to get a hold of him. Like, you know, he just liked disappearing into the mountains with his family, and that's that was his prerogative. But there still has to be a reason for his actions. Yeah. And we don't well, know they, that reason. Right. And I'm not even – Adam, I don't even know if Fridge knows. Like, I think Fridge knows, but I think, think Fridge is classy enough to, to – to not push it. Fridge isn't classy. <laughs> <laughs> to me, Fridge just seems like the kind of guy who's like, you know what? I think there might be something personal here, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna just come out and say it. But there is There's... something that doesn't make sense here. No matter how many times it's reported, no how many, no matter how much information comes out about it, something doesn't just does not add up. Blake Wheeler threw his tracksuit in the shower. That's what I think happened. Oh, <laughs> I was like, wait a second. Is that how the story went? Oh, no, no, no. wait. <laughs> so, so there's a gun to your head, Adam and Steve, and you have to place a bet on whether or not Dustin Bufflin plays a game in the NHL ever again. What do you say? Yes. I'm going to no? say no. Yes. All right. We will see. With whom, Steven? Yes. 